Advice zu untergraben. The Undergrounded Podcast that should be always listened to first. Today we will do a little something extra um, because uh, I have a nice opportunity to, to sadly drive a long time with our dear member Artu, who is actually one and only a guy from the chapter Estonia and chapter Finland. For some reason, I mean, we, we are about to expand just now, right? Hopefully. Like, hopefully, like crazy. Yeah. So, I don't um, want to write. I want to take photos. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, I wanted to take this opportunity to ask him about his experiences at the Partisan Metal Open Air from someone who has been to several different um, Estonian and Finnish metal festivals so that um, you, dear listener, could actually um, yeah, get an idea from a proper Finnish guy with heavy social anxiety, I would say. Like, heavy social anxiety. Artu, are you drunk right now? First question. No. No, I'm not. This is sad. Okay. This is genuinely sad. So while I concentrate on, on, the, on the drive, I would suggest that you just start with, like, how do you, when I, when, when I now ask you about a partisan metal open air, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Like just a quick buzzword round, like the one or two things that were remarkable in your personal opinion. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I would say perfect balance of size and, and the bands that you have. Like uh, for a festival, I, I think that's maybe for me like the ceiling, like on the festival size, what, what I would like to have. I'm not too big on this kind of huge, huge uh, festival. So, so I think the size was perfect. Um, there was interesting amount of more underground stuff, and then you had your headliners to balance it out. So I, I think the balance is, is the word we're looking for here. Really good. Would you? Would you say, like, when you compare it to uh, whatever you've seen in Finland and in Estonia, that there's something like the Partisan that people could attend there, like comparison in size and in band? Um, yeah, well, <clears throat> the biggest difference is the uh, price in beer, especially with Finland. <laughs> so, so that that's already how, how? Uh, that's already a great a great the reason to to come to Germany and enjoy a festival. Uh, yeah, the price difference is about 10 euros. So, it's good. Okay. So, <laughs> but, so. Uh, but also for bands, bands like I, I think it's always interesting um, between different countries when you have the festival. In, in, is it in Germany or is it in Finland, whatever. But because you are having a festival in a certain country, then it usually means that you have, a, of course, bigger selection of local bands or from, from that country. And that is always, for me, really interesting, or the most interesting part, I'd say, to find these uh, local bands that you might not know uh, unless you are really invested in the scene like already. But, but yeah, that, that, that's definitely the best reason, uh, apart from the beer. Were there like a lot of bands that you have never seen before, like genuinely? Uh, honestly, yes, uh, I, I have to admit, I'm, I'm not afraid to admit, there was a lot. Like for me, this, this festival is definitely about uh, exploring and finding finding new, new bands that I haven't heard before live and even bands that I have never heard of. Uh, there was many and that, that was great. It, it, it was just the uh, best experience. Uh, to find there was so so much to find yeah, from from the festival so now would be like the perfect time opportunity to do some name dropping name dropping and, and i i really like that you can tell it right right from your head and not really looking into the so so this is generally like like what i like about r2 and the finnish people uh that they that they can just recollect everything just so fine so um so yeah just like like what? yeah, what? <laughs> because because in Duno I am also very shitty <laughs> with, with, um, no, with no, bad but... name. So you 
use it. What? No, no, um, no, no, no. What? No, what? No, you... I will be name, name dropping left and right. No yeah. Worries. Okay. So so go on. What what was like your your go to things that you that you discovered or or that you thought were outstanding from the crowd? Because I mean the whole the whole billing it was huge. I think there was about 60 bands or something. Yeah, almost something Which like is, that. Which is like from the size, it's it's easily comparable to to even the bigger bigger stuff in Germany, in my personal opinion. But if I if I'm allowed to say a little something here, thank you for letting me talk for a second. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, you don't that, talk that often. Yeah, no, not friend, yeah. never. Yes. Like, actually, never. Like like yes. the people know that. Yes. Um, that the the. The choice of bands have always been with Partisan truthful to the source and truthful to the underground. And um, we had long discussions if it like the Partisan isn't already too big for us. But um, in our personal definition, um, if you are true to the underground and still sticking to to the roots, you deserve um, our presence. <laughs> 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 like you, you deserve to be bothered by by us with our strange requests and um, bad character. So yeah, sorry about that again. So okay. yeah, so so in my personal opinion, the lineup was just fitting myself. Like you said, a lot of stuff to discover, a lot of underground stuff. Besides having the bigger names that I dearly ignored, as always. So um, yeah, what were your top picks? Well, for me, definitely. Uh, I was kind of expecting them as well, even though I haven't seen them before live, but uh, for me it was definitely Borga. Um, and uh, I, I really enjoyed the show as well. I was super happy uh, to meet, meet with them afterwards as well in the campgrounds. Uh, great guys. And, and yeah, that, that was definitely for me like the high, high moment of, of the festival. But also uh, there was uh, what we did, for example, as undergrounded, like our main focus uh, was, uh, for example, with Dark and Nocturne Slaughter Cult, uh, where, where you were uh, making video of, of the whole ordeal. That, that was a great experience. And for me also, that was probably the most interesting uh, show from the main stage, because that was for me, like I'm more of the tenth stage guy, I, I preferred um, uh, to, to have the shows uh, that were played in the tent. It, I, I think it fits especially black metal a lot better when, when you have this kind of more intimate setting. Uh, but but the, for this example that I mentioned, it, it was that show worked really well even on the big main stage. Uh, and, and I think that's not something that is always the case with, with uh, black metal bands. It can be sometimes really difficult to take that kind of a bigger stage and, and they, they really killed it. So. So yeah, that, that was also really, really good. Um, but yeah, uh, there was all, uh, some others, like for name dropping reasons, Hell Ripper, uh, really enjoyed the energy of those guys. Uh, I, I saw them in the lineup. Uh, I thought that they seemed interesting and uh, I, uh, I was really, really happy that, that uh, I, I had to write uh, kind of feeling about them they, they really nailed it it was a great live show as well uh, uh, so yeah um, th those are probably my 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 main picks of course we ended the festival with uh, with the uh, uh, Oculus playing in the 10th stage um, I have seen them before photographed them before always a great show so it was a perfect perfect ending for the festival as well for me because after that like there was some bands in the main stage i think but i, I don't even remember what, what was it so for me that was the main main act of, of the last day i think yeah like going away a little bit in in my past from from the death metal stuff like there was a lot especially on friday there there was i felt it was more like on the death metal-ish side of things yeah. so i actually i didn't really follow that um and i can only add up to, to going that the 10th stage was um, my go-to area because again there's nothing more nothing worse than having uh, a black metal band playing in broad daylight <laughs> um, it's just not fitting death metal works much better or like some of the, those fun combos who like have more like a grind quarry yeah. approach to things so yeah everything that you said is like i also like them a lot maybe adding up to um having um malfas and mifarash 
Yeah, which, those, those both shows were great, by the way. Yeah, like like Mifarash is or was um, a re revelation for me. I'm I'm I also like the the more occult side of things where where they where they like really. Um, yeah, I mean you could you could uh, the mukwa uh, or or wada kind kind of style as just hiding your face and uh, the people are ridiculing it um, for being posers already because yeah so much of the bands do it but if you have this more occult and and like Patushka yeah. putting it to to the last level like yeah. there it's already kind of a little bit cheesy I would say yeah. so just below that you mean it that it's underground then I really dig it Mefrash was was just a great band. Yeah. And as well, yeah, uh, almost I would say like it was a theatrical experience, like really, really nice atmospheric show. With with the blood that we managed somehow managed to dodge, and this poor girl, I think she was from from Partizan itself, like doing this really nice, um, this really nice after movie and really quick. Yeah. I think she she managed to catch like half of the of the blood stuff that was just spilled <laughs> over the crowd. Um, so I hope. I hope if you listen to this, uh, listen to this. I ho really hope you got your, your gear clean. <laughs> so yeah, but I li I like that, and um, also having the opportunity to to again film Dark and Nocturne Slaughter Cult. Uh, thank you again, Partisan, for making this uh, possible. Like um, um, this, this was an experience for me just to be on the bigger stage, to um, yeah having the opportunity. I don't think that I've been to a bigger stage yet in my. 10, 10 plus something years in, in the scene. So great experience again. Yeah, I tried to yeah. catch some making of pictures of you on that stage, by the way. Hopefully they turn out fine. Oh, stop it. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, you will get the 10 euros later. <laughs> um, yeah, so Malfas again, like like from Switzerland, they, they were awesome. Um, I think who else was Larry? I mean, some of the bands I've already seen, but really sticking out with Hell River, you, you mentioned. Um, what about the? I mean, I do know that you that you also aren't shy of uh, shying away from the bigger acts. Like when it comes to the headliner, um, like maybe maybe not for underground because we uh, for obvious main, non mainstream reasons. What is um, like what was uh, your headliner of hearts? Like actual headliners, because I think I already mentioned that, that for yeah. me it was Oculus. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but, but yeah, I, I do recognize that there are some bigger names who were the, um, the official Abad. headliners, yes, Abbott or, or um, Behemoth. But, but uh, I, I mean, like they, they have their time and place. I understand the need to have bigger names on festivals like this. It's obviously good, good for, for the turn out <clears throat> so so yeah I don't I don't mind it um, from those uh, headline acts I, I went to see a few of them not really my cup of tea uh, but uh, but yeah it, it worked of obviously like for the crowd like this kind of bigger acts uh, it, 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 it was a good show um, uh, from from uh, most of the headliners I saw so, so. okay um... Like, again, you, you already mentioned, like, the, the alcohol situation um, <laughs> and, and the prices and everything. Like, what was, the, what was the things that you, like, didn't expect from a German <clears throat> festival this size? Or what was maybe awkward? Like... Well, the biggest and best surprise was that uh, the, in the food department, uh, I found my new favorite, favorite snack. Uh, it, it's called Schnitzel Brötchen, something like that. Sorry for butchering the name, but, but yeah, that, that was That's great. Quite good. <clears throat> they, they, they don't they don't sell things like that usually in Finland. It was it was great. Simple food, uh, I like it. But tasty. Yes, yes. Do you want to do you want to mention the encounter that we oh, had that was oh, yeah. mind altering and yes. mind blowing? And yes. Like we, they they those guys needed a Nobel Prize. Yeah. for their invention. Yes, we, we, we just accidentally walked into a <clears throat> couple who, who were eating those said uh, schnitzelbrötchen, except... Alter, uh, alteration, <laughs> yeah, schnitzelbrötchen. <laughs> yeah. What was the alteration for the schnitzelbrötchen? So, so it was actually brötchen schnitzel then, I guess, because they, they used two schnitzels as the 
bread and then then there was one bread in between which is not the usual case that that was amazing i wanted to try myself but then i was too shy to actually order one so so then i just ordered the normal one <laughs> but I, I got the feeling that they were very drunk yes like they, they, they enjoyed were it they genuinely. were hammered they were hammered yes <laughs> but it was great <laughs> but i think in the in the um in the realm of man no one else has ever tried something like that to actually make a brötchen schnitzel out of schnitzel brötchen yeah and yeah that was awesome but but the random encounters like that i i think are always uh always great in in such festivals like you you have this run uh, like you meet meet people uh new people talk about some random stuff see see these kind of events it's it's always great uh yesterday for example after the aklis Ak was uh, just uh, ending their gig there was a uh, another couple not the same uh they, they were just sleeping on the ground outside the tent and nobody could wake them up they, they, And then, then I actually went to get the security guy, and then he was a bit like, tsh, tsh, "Wake up!" <laughs> and, and and then they just said, "No, we're just sleeping." And then the security was like, "Okay," and, and yeah, every, everything was fine. But yeah, it was super hilarious. Everybody were staring. What are they doing? They were enjoying the atmospheric show. Yeah, just and their sleep. Yes, <laughs> so, <laughs> fair amount of sleep. It's healthy, yeah. you know. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I I didn't get much of that um, or enough of that during the. Festival, but I have to say, uh, the, especially staying on uh, on the VIP camping area, it was great for sleeping in festival conditions. Uh, of course, it's not ideal ever, but uh, for me, it was it, it was a good good camp experience. Uh, really nice. Have to have to give uh, good feedback about that. Yeah, kudos to <laughs> to to partisan about that. So it was, and also what was exceptionally well handled, I think, was. Like the, you could move really, really freely um, between the area and, and the campground uh, as, as like a press. That, that was great. Uh, there was no issues. Um, so yeah, really, really good. Personally, I think the, the prices of the food as well. Of course, the alcohol was, was also really good. And I was amazed that, like, I don't recall like the last time it was 2018 or 2019 when I've been at Partizan. And for me, not a lot changed. And the prices, like after inflation, after the COVID times and after all the stuff, the prices were insanely cheap, especially for the food. And I was like, how the, how the hell do you even manage to make that sustainable for, for the festival? And that's the feedback that I think we got the most from also from other people. Yeah. Like, like um, <laughs> if, you, if you would go to any other festival or location with the same size you would pay like maybe a double i would say yeah. and imagine this coming from from uh, my finnish perspective where you can you know in a festival face a um, hot dog that costs 25 euros not joking by the way uh so so yeah it's for for, for me it was definitely really uh nice and affordable pricing for for a festival setting uh, so yeah definitely Do they have diamonds in the... Um, do you need a dentist uh, appointment after eating one of those... Uh, I don't know, I didn't... Gems <laughs> of the Finnish hot dogs. I actually don't know, I didn't order one <laughs> for obvious reasons. But <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. hey, <they're> gems. <laughs> yeah, they can keep their diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> keep your blood diamonds. Uh, yes. Wow, why do those hot dogs taste so rusty? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay. So... Basically, we, we covered the campground, we covered the, the area itself, we covered the food, we covered the alcohol, and bands. we covered the bands. Yeah. So, what, do you, what would you recommend for your Finnish and Estonian brethren? I mean, fun fact, I met three Estonian guys. And I didn't, which next, is weird. Which is weird, <laughs> like, like yeah, the only three uh, Estonian guys that I... Yeah. <laughs> but, um, But it was funny. I uh, I just complimented them on their uh, Hard Rock Lager yeah. T-shirts, and I said, "Hey, tallest tallest festival," and they were like, "Huh?" And I was like, "Ah, oh, sorry, are you from Estonia? Yeah, great festival. I've been there." So so yeah, that was also funny. Yeah. Um, the international the international uh, uh, P 
years that have been there. So yeah, what would you recommend to your Finnish and Estonian brethren um, when it comes to partisan open air? Yeah, like I, I actually had a discussion about this theme with, with some of our undergrounded members yesterday. And that I, I kind of realized with this trip that traveling to a festival in a different country and especially when it's a nice place like Germany it's it's actually really easy of course it's always an investment like when you travel it, uh, you need the time as well uh, but but it's surprisingly easy and especially if you can have a small group of people for example from from your circles then then like it, it's probably even easier to travel uh, traveling alone is always like maybe it's boring sometimes but at the same time you you have time to listen to good music uh, I was preparing for the festival and basically listening through the bands that I want to want to um, then hear live as well so so it's it's I would say that's my main suggestion that don't be like afraid to travel to other countries for festivals of course support your local bands support your local festivals but but if if you have the time and can afford like one one uh, trip to a festival at the, uh, abroad then uh, I would say uh, for me this was this uh, partisan trip was a perfect perfect uh, in 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 many many ways uh, both both mu in music and also also as an experience in general like really really recommend uh, taking the effort nice last words I would say yeah so yeah if you if you catch yourself in a in a in a in the need of a nice uh, medium sized still medium sized true to the underground festival um, consider a visit in in uh, Schlotheim Obermela at the airport thank you thank you for saying those names I couldn't say them so yeah thank you but you could repeat about Schnitzelbrötchen <laughs> if, if if you want to like having a nice laugh penguin <laughs> hello hello Oh, hi, <laughs> um, yeah, and um, and I think to to add up on that on the on the travel part, um, they had like a nice bus shuttle to the next train station. So besides uh, my my dear Nick Rima from from the Maltesian scene, who had to take like five trains or something to coming from Berlin to Schlotheim Obermela, um, he still managed it. And he still had a laugh about it. So yeah, it's easy to travel, it's easy to go there. Take a trip if you'd like to. And yeah, we'll maybe see us next time. Good. Over and out.